This is Professor Darif Seitz. This Java tutorial is the third and final part of a series that introduces object-oriented programming through an example, a random numbers game. In part two, we looked at the class diagram showing the architecture of the classes involved. In this part, we'll be focusing on this random numbers game class here and its client that calls it. This is the random numbers game client. It has the main method where the program starts. It's static. The very first statement here has the new keyword which is used to create, also known as instantiate, an object. It's going to instantiate an object called game and it is of type random numbers game. The constructor that's being used here takes no parameters and the game is of type random numbers game. The next thing that happens is that object game, that reference, is used to call a function, a public function in the API of the class called play. To call a function you use the object reference, the object name, the dot operator, which is a period, and then the signature for the function, which is the function name and the parameters. Play does not take any parameters, just has the parentheses. That will cause the flow of control to go over to the play function and until the game is finished it will stay over there and when the game is finished flow will return here and will continue here with this comment which is not executable it just tells us that at this point the game is over then the client here will display the game summary consisting of some game parameters that were used in the game the winnings that occurred and thanking the user in a closing statement. Looking at the game parameters, we see the game is used here to call a getter function to get the cost per spin from the game, and that's output. And notice the use here of system.out.println. That has two levels of the dot operator because system is a class that has a part in it, a data member called out which is a reference to a print stream so to access that member you need the dot operator and then within the print stream there's a function called print line you have to use the dot operator uh, to call that function so it's not important that you understand all the details of the code here such as what an if statement is or the else and the indentation the main things that we're trying to point out in this tutorial is those high-level things pertaining to object-oriented programming, such as the new keyword to create objects, the dot operator to access methods or functions using object references, and the fact that you can use other classes. System is in the Java class library. Down here we see math being used. The absolute value function of math is being used and it takes a number and we're passing it to winnings because when they lose the winnings is negative but we want to show how much they lost so we use the absolute value function there to show that. And notice that math with a capital M is not an object the absolute value function in math is static. It's one of those functions that you don't need an object. You can just use the class name to call it. This is the random numbers game class. It has a comment at the top. This green text is a comment. Then, at, right at the beginning are the fields, the data members. And notice that they're all private. They're grouped for convenience into similar types, the booleans, the ints, uh, 
uh, and even logically group the random digits, the money. It's important to nicely organize programs so that they can be easily understood and maintained. There's more private data. All the data is private here for keeping it hidden from clients. That's data encapsulation. Text fields. Notice the use of string here. These fields are final. It means they're constants. They will not be changed once they're initialized. So there's many strings being used. There are some support services here as well. Not only do we have primitive data types, but we can have references to objects. Here we have a random class object called random and a scanner class object called scanner. Note again, objects start with a lowercase letter in classes with an uppercase. We use the new keyword again to construct the random object right here at the point of its definition. So it's a combined declaration and definition and construction. Scanner, similarly. Scanner, however, its constructor takes a uh, parameter here and we're passing it a system.in to tie it to the input system console because we'll be getting input from the user. Next, after the data, we see the constructors. They're coded here in this order to make it easier to read the program because construction is something you want to know about right away. There's two constructors, one with no arguments, no parameters, and one that takes two parameters. This allows clients of the class to have some options when they construct an object. They can construct it with the default settings that the class uh, uses or specify their own settings for cost per spin and spin base winnings. After the constructors, uh, this class has been organized with the functions in alphabetical order. You can put them in whatever order you want, but it's much easier to uh, read and maintain a class when you can find things easily. So alphabetical order is a, a good practice. Notice that this first function, calculate winnings, is private. It's a helper function that will be used by the public functions within this class. We're not interested in its details right now. Next is the generate random number private helper function. It takes two parameters, a begin and an end int for the range that you want to generate a number within. It's used several places within this class and it calls the random object that we saw up there in the the data members, the, the service of the random class, calls its next int function with the dot operator and passes parameters such that such as to get a random number within the desired range and here's the return statement returning the value back to the caller of this private function. We then have some getter functions also called accessors. This one get cost per spin spin simply returns the cost per spin data member and notice that data members in the class do not need to be have an object name in front of them because they are members of this particular uh, class and just using their name uh, is all that's needed. Finally down here is a public function, the play function, a very key function in this class. It kind of manages everything that goes on with the game. It displays game instructions and then it goes into a loop, a while loop with a condition of true, which means it will keep looping until some t somewhere in the loop the code uh, returns out of the loop, either breaks out of it or, or returns. Notice here bwin, the b is, stands for boolean, that's a data member of this class, it's initialized to false in this loop, it doesn't need an object with a dot operator. 
we just the class displays the continuation instructions uh, to where the user can decide to just continue with the next spin or to quit the game or to enter the secret codes again we don't need to understand all the details of things that you haven't learned yet but notice if they quit that part of the code here hits a return statement and that returns to the caller in our case the client in the main method when the game is over and then down at the bottom of this loop is what happens every time the user spins again the private spin function is called then the calculate winnings from that spin and then the report winnings from that spin and this continues and continues until the user decides to quit. Here's the report winnings private function, the spin function which calls random to get the random digits and that brings us to the down to the bottom of our class here. Again the key points to understand are those pertaining to the object-oriented programming concepts that we've learned in this tutorial. The fact that classes make use of other classes and that it's through objects at runtime. You use the new keywords to instantiate, uh, to create your objects and then you call the objects with the, the dot operator that uh, uses the object name and then the method or function name and then the parameters that you want to use and then the concept of the constructors themselves that are provided by the class to allow some variety in their construction. This uh, concludes this uh, three-part tutorial and hopefully gives you a good introduction to some of the concepts in object-oriented programming.